It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, and we've got a showdown in the NFC North. It's the Minnesota Vikings and the Detroit Lions, and it comes your way next. The seating capacity is 65,000 at Ford Field, and we are right around that number today. A good crowd on hand and seemingly ready to go in the Motor City. Today, we've got what's always a hard-hitting battle in the NFC North, as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Detroit Lions. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gauden. Now, Charles, you and I, we've done a lot of games together. Always seems like we're rehashing the same storylines. Turnovers, of course, always a big story. Quarterback play, running backs, yada, yada, yada. But getting ready for this one, one word kept coming to mind, and that's preparation. Well, it's critical to be prepared physically, mentally. When you think about getting ready for an NFL game, you have to wonder, what will they throw at us that maybe we haven't seen before? two-minute drill, maybe different things like that. Got to be prepared. You're exactly right. Joseph ready to get this one started and we are underway from Ford Field and he'll be stopped up at the 25 so here are the Lions now coming out for their opening drive and they're brought out by a former number one overall pick coming off one of his best seasons ever in year seven of his career now in year eight Jared Goff and at one point, the ascension of Jared Goff was really, really strong. Back-to-back -back Pro Bowls, took his team to the Super Bowl, and came really within one quarter of winning it. But since that time, he's had bouts of inconsistency, and that's been the struggle for him as he tries to get back to the form he showed earlier in his career. They'll start on the ground with Montgomery. Skirts by him at the 35. And this will wind up the Lions' first down as he's got this past the 35 to about the 37. Well, there you go. This offense off to a strong start this afternoon. Yeah, with a big run and a first down. That's putting what you practice into play. That's excellent execution to get things started. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They'll keep pounding here with Montgomery. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. And they'll come up second and seven. Out of the gun. Golf. That throw taken in by Jamison Williams. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. The Coffin Williams hooking up there for a Lions first. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. On first and 10, Goff. And this one almost intercepted. Not a good throw there. Nearly an opening drive, INT. Nice progress down the field. Was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. To throw on second down is gone. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Throwing again is gone. And now another one thrown incomplete. The frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down and he left no doubt 
that he was throwing that one away. Jack Fox out to punt here on fourth down. Brandon Powell deep for Minnesota. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. So here come the Vikings with a long field ahead of them. They're led out by the rookie, picked 164th in this past draft out of BYU, Jaron Hall. We're seeing it more and more in this league, how teams love to have athletes back there taking the snaps, guys who can throw it and move around and get yards with their legs if needed. He's one of the best examples that we see out there right now. He can throw for hundreds of yards one week and then run for 100 plus the next. He adds an extra dimension that really confounds defenses when he puts it all together. Hall finds his man. There's Jordan Addison. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it's second down. Throwing here is Hall. Flush to his right, and he slides to avoid the hit. All that gets him is just a yard, and now it's third down. Now it's Hall. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Here's Hall. Complete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. He was waving his arms, wanted the football, but he dropped it. And that reminds me of a story you told me from your days at Tennessee. We don't need to mention the other guy's name, but when he dropped an open pass that you blew coverage on, what'd you say to him? Yeah, it's really not right since I blew coverage, but <laughs> since he dropped the pass, I said, well, maybe next time he'll just walk it out here and hand it to you. Would that be easier? He wasn't, real, th he wasn't real thrilled with that. That's cold-blooded. Cold-blooded. <laughs> Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. I'll give the rookie another one on this opening drive and a first down with it. A nice start, Charles, for the first-year passer. He's come out, made a few plays, nice plays to begin this contest. He certainly has, and if he finishes off this drive with a touchdown pass, I vote we don't call him rookie anymore. We'll move him right to veteran and continue from there. Now he dumps this off over the middle. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Well, we know he can run the football, too, but he's a good pass catcher, and that's been on display here, Charles, on this opening drive. And we certainly have seen the benefits of what he did in the offseason, which was spend more time with wide receivers, working on routes, working on cuts, in order to make himself a more complete running back and even more of a threat downfield. And he will slide to a halt at the end of that one. When in doubt, do it yourself as he keeps it for three and a first down. As he came to the line of scrimmage, he knew he didn't need much to reset the chain. So when he saw the space he needed, no hesitation. He went to the marker and got his guys a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. First carry now for Alexander Madison. There he goes, right side. And a good-looking run there as he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18-yard line. That good for 19 and a first down. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. 
Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. Back to the ground on first down. Here's Madison. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Now I think we're going to get a timeout here. Yes, a timeout here as it looks like we've got a lion that's shaken up. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. In motion right is Osborne. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there, all 11 guys on defense. Diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Here now a third down and eight. Paul to throw it. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Nice call by the defense there on third down. Just flood the field with extra defensive backs in their dime package. Nowhere to go with the football. Forces the incompletion. Now Greg Joseph for the field goal try. From the right hash, this from 33. The kick by Joseph is good. And the Vikings have a 3 nothing lead. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. Joseph now to kick this one away. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Say Brown in motion right. Uh, he's going to get it on the jet sweep. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. And defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine for the 26. Off play action. Here's Goff. That's going to be caught by Josh Reynolds. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A gain there of 21 yards. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. A bit of an opening there on the first down run as they get this forward for about six yards. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's a second down and four. Now golf. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. And he's only hit on two of his first six passes. Time for a quick quarterback regroup here with a big third down coming up. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Now golf. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Lions first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. This offense is starting to get into rhythm. A nice quick throw there on target, able to pick up another first down. First down, here's the run with Montgomery. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. 
second down. It's a pickup of three. Brings up second and seven. Second and seven. Goff now looks to throw. That is caught by LaPorta. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 23 yards to pick up there. Uh, it's a well-designed play here. Three wide receivers in the formation. They're all going to run deep route to put pressure on the safeties. And then they let their tight end cut his route off a little shorter and work toward the middle of the field. That's a difficult route to try to defend. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Throw left side caught by LaPorta. And the Lions are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. They'll run with Montgomery. And he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. A pickup of four on first down. It'll be second and goal. When we talk about being on schedule, I think they're on schedule after that run, getting it right down there on the doorstep. Maybe even a little bit ahead because now the defense can't dictate with pressure. They're guessing about where you're going to go. I might come right back at them with the same play, the same set. And he's going to take it in for a Lion touchdown. David Montgomery taking it in from a yard out. And the Lions have answered that early field goal to take a first quarter lead. And this is where you can't help but think about our friend, the coach, the late John Madden, because this is his kind of football right here. Line him up and let him get after it down in the trenches. And as a running back, you just need that one crease, one side of daylight. He finds it, and he barrels into the end zone. Touchdown, coach, just like you would draw it up. Extra point by Badgley, up and good. And that makes it a 7-3 lead. Taking it about the one. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal. And I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. Yeah, not out and out joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit even though they wanted the six points. Yeah, maybe wore down the other defense. We'll see. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. Now Hall. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. So they take a decent shot, CD, and the flag comes out for pass interference. Yeah, a little DPI, as they like to call it in the business, right? And the farther you get downfield, the more frenetic things get and the more calm and control you have to remain as a defender. That was a little bit of a slip there, and the penalty will go against him. And a good push up front, and he's able to navigate his way down inside the 30. This game not quite as good as the last, but still over 40 yards between the two. So they go pass, now they go run, and two plays resulting in really nice pickups. Certainly sounds like a 50-50 deal, doesn't it? Sounds like great balance. 
Well, you know what all those coaches have told us over the years, Brandon, that balance is? It means doing what you want to when you want to. That play call is working very well for them right now. Oh, and this one may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. The Vikings with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it second down and 12. Back to throw, Hall. And this one is incomplete. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. Complete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Hall. He's got his target. That's complete. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. 21 yards there on third down. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. You have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. On first and ten, Hall. And that will be caught, but out of the end zone, says the field judge. It's ruled incomplete. We know all the receivers go through those tiptoe drills, right, trying to get their feet. Kevin O'Connell clearly unhappy with that call, and he's thrown that red challenge flag out on the field. Previous play is under review. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stays. So not successful there on the challenge, and he'll have to be careful from here on out because he'll only have one challenge remaining. Here's second and ten. Here's a give to Madison running right. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Alexander Madison taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Vikings have regained the lead. You get in a second and long situation down here in the red zone. I'd say most defensive coaches would think pass. Let's bring some pressure. So this is kind of a tendency breaker here to hit him with something on the ground, and he'll take it all the way into the end zone. Joseph connects on the extra point, and the lead is now 10 to 7. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it was capped off by a touchdown scamper from Alexander Madison. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. Good drive last time. Really effective passing the football. Do you maybe mix it up, now go to the ground game and surprise the defense a little bit? I would anticipate the defense making some changes but I wouldn't necessarily just absolutely go in the opposite direction. They're doing so well throwing the ball. Yeah, well, I'm, well, I wouldn't change it. it up until they showed me a reason to do so. To Montgomery to begin the drive. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. 
A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 14 and a first down for Detroit. I don't care what anyone says. I want a big time back in in this kind of yardage each and every time I step on the field. A tone setter, these guys are hard to find. Again, they'll go ground with Montgomery. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. An awful lot of congestion in the middle third of the field, but how about our defensive tackle right there? He didn't just hold the line. He provided some push and smacked the ball carrier down for a loss. On second down, here's Goff. A little short pass here taken in by Laporta. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that's going to set up a tough third and nine. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Here's third and nine. Here's Gaw. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. On fourth down, Jack Fox on to punt for Detroit. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. They'll come out with a three tight end look on the first play of the drive. Jefferson moving in motion left. Here's a fake on the jet sweep and instead a give up the middle. And he is met at the line of scrimmage and he goes down right there. No gain on the play, it'll be second down. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do? Just make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, your front five, whatever you've got in front of you to take up all the blocking, allow you to roam and hit. And that's what he did on that play. That burst good for 20 and a first down. Well, partner, I have to say they called him in the right defense there. Nickel set, fifth defensive back on the field, and they love to run against that because now you typically get a bigger blocker on a smaller defender. Yeah, because those DBs like you, they want the interception. They're not as worried about the running play, right? <laughs> not at all. And I, I, used to, I, I still remember being in school and one of my offensive line teammates used to say, boy, I love to come downfield and hit you little people. <laughs> Good run there. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. Second and 10. Throwing again. Hall. This goes out wide for Madison. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short. So it'll be third and less than a yard. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together, when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup with someone trying to cover them. But they also have those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. 
after that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And this will be taken at the 13. 39-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Lions will take over. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Goff in this Lions offense, set for a first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. He'll begin by dropping it off to Montgomery, and he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. From the 22 now, here's second and six. To throw is gone. He's got this to Williams complete. Still going inside the 20. Touchdown, Detroit. Jamison Williams, 78 yards. And the Lions are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. And he showcased his blazing speed on that one. Was he wearing football cleats or tracks like <laughs> Because he was gone. Big time play. And just think about what that does if you're a receiver on the team with him. Well, that's got to open things up for you as well because if I'm a defense, I've got to get back deeper and deeper in order to keep him in front. But I'm not sure how many can actually keep him in front with that speed. Extra point by Badgley, up and good. And the lead is now 14-10. to 10. now as they line up and kick this one away. This taken in right around the goal line. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. They'll start on the ground with Madison. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. 72 yards here for Madison. He's got a first down. Now that's how you start a drive. Not only do you pick up a first down, you do it on a chunk play. Big yardage. And now you put a little bit of a dent in the confidence of the defense. So first and 10 now from the 30. Another carry now for Madison. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Nice run defense presented there, and what I mean by that is discipline. Guys filling the right gaps in the right holes, no one over-pursuing, and making a very nice play. On second down, this is Madison. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. The Vikings on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. But whenever you call and run the hitch route, a lot of times that ball's got to be in the air before the receiver even turns around. That's a result of throwing it so many times in practice. It's really a timing route. 
Make sure that ball's out of your hands. And oftentimes, receiver turns around, and there's the ball. Nice completion there. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. They'll go Madison up the middle. And he's going to get it across the midfield stripe into Lion territory. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury. And we'll be back in a moment. Here's a second and five. Operating from the gun. Hall. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was trying to find Justin Jefferson there, and it's third and five. Looking to throw. Paul. Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. From left side, and Osborne has it. Touchdown, Vikings! K.J. Osborne, 37 yards, and the Vikings have yet again retaken the lead. So the quarterback drops to throw, looks over, and boom, a guy that wide open, he has to be thinking, wait a minute, this is some kind of a dream. This is too easy. Yeah, a great dream, one you don't want to wake up from, but for the defense, almost feels like there was a bust in coverage. Joseph now to have the PAT. It's good, and they'll take a 17-14 lead. So that drive goes eight plays, and it's polished off by a Viking score. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Here comes Khalif Raymond from his end zone. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. Khalif Raymond, he might take this all the way. He will take this all the way. Touchdown, Lions. That was a special return, and it happened because he's a special returner. He has to have that approval from his special teams coach's head coach to bring it out of the end zone. But let's be honest, a lot of times where they bring it out of the end zone like he did there, they don't have approval. I mean, I think a lot of times they do, but correct me if I'm wrong, sometimes it's just a guy getting a feel, right? Yeah, exactly right. What's the old adage? Sometimes you just have to know when to break the rules, and if you do, you're taking on some responsibility, but he was happy to do so there. Here's Badgley now to try to add the PAT. It's up and good to make it 21-17. Well, we talk a lot about explosive plays on offense. How about an explosive play on special teams? Certainly one there on the kick return for a touchdown. kick return TD. Here's yet another kickoff. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. Alexander Madison leading this Vikings offense out there to begin the next drive. Now he's having himself a little bit of a banner game. His team right now, though, losing. Needs a little bit of help. And I kind of equate it to a basketball game where you have the big score and sometimes your strategy is 
Okay, you can go ahead and have all of his points. Let's hold down everyone else, and that's the way you win the game. And right now, he needs everyone else to start scoring, quote unquote, as he's been. Yeah, and he's hoping to keep it close so maybe they can keep it on the ground, not start to go through the air as much. Kirby Joseph there to drop him. Second and seven from the 20. Draw play, Madison. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. fielded at the 34. That'll go as a punt of 42, seven all the return. And they will take over first and 10. Detroit's offense ready to take over. And the points, they have come fast and furious in this quarter. You really don't want to be on the defensive side of the ball right now, do you? Because you're either thinking, my replacement may get an opportunity. <laughs> Your head better be on a swivel. Totally. Or maybe I just need to get out of the game for a while because I just can't slow these guys down. They've got to figure out a way to disrupt these offenses. And typically, one guy makes a big play, and that can help change things. They'll be looking for disruption on both sides right now. So the completion good for six yards, and that'll bring up second down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. This second and four. Golf. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Gibbs. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 15 yards for the Lions there on a first down. I have to tell you, Brandon, I feel like a coach right now because I'm wondering why the angle route continues to be so effective when as an inside linebacker, you're always taught, don't let someone cross your face. If they want to go outside, it's okay. But they make that outside fake, cut back inside, off into great success. On first down, it's gone. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. One of the best routes, one of the favorite routes of any play caller. He just ran that with a nice little angle route. That's supposed to be a catch, and usually it is in running back drop. Yeah, I mean, he's a running back, but he's got hands. He should have caught it. Now a second and 10. Goff now to throw. They get this underneath to Montgomery. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. To the air again, golf. And the throw there going to be incomplete. How about this defense? They came up with a couple of big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Here's Michael Badgley ready for the field goal try. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. Batchley's kick is good, and they will open their lead up to a touchdown at 24-17. Maybe a little bit of an anxious moment there as that ball got closer and closer, but it does curl in. Yeah, actually did a little bit of a slow dance there with the left upright, didn't it? But had just enough space, as you said, for it to curl in.
The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. The Vikings going to take over now late in this first half. A slim deficit here in a one-possession game. Not much time left, obviously. We'll see if they can march this down the field, at least get three, and take some momentum into the locker room. for his running back it's complete and they'll get him down here at the 23 they'll wind up getting just a yard out of it and that will bring up second down and that's a good job there by the corner we do talk about this a lot that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers tackling isn't everyone's thing but in this case he came up quickly and made a nice sure tackle shot before break and with just one second remaining in the first half they'll call the timeout and unless this is a quick incompletion this is likely the last play here of this first half a final shot before break Paul. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted. Thrown back across his body. Jack Campbell with a pick. And the Lions are going to get the football back as time will run out in this third quarter of play. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports halftime report. In that first half, it was David Montgomery who proved to be tough to stop. He wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. It's been a shootout so far. We'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Now the Vikings offense set to go to work to begin this third quarter. Well, Charles, we saw a pretty entertaining first half, close ball game. Remember there toward the end of the second quarter, the opposition scored to take the lead. Now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. gauntlet has been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. Going to begin the drive here with Madison. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards. It moves the sticks. The more football I watch, the more I want to check and see if teams are going to panic when they're down on the scoreboard. And this team has shown no signs of doing that. A lot of the time, they come out after the half. Things haven't worked so well in the first go around. They want to throw the football like crazy. But the way to open up throwing the ball is to run it. And they've run it well here to start the second half. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. You know, it's become cliche, but we have seen it and observed it. When runners have days like what we're seeing right now, they often take their offensive linemen out for stakes afterwards, don't they? They all go buy them dinner. But after a play like that, 
He may reduce and make up to the corner to grab a hot dog or two, huh? Hey, I mean, they've still been blocking for him well in this game. They don't get one mulligan up front. Okay, so what we're saying then is we're going petite filet <laughs> instead of porterhouse. Eight How's ounce. That? Eight ounce is good. All right, just check it. Defensively for the Lions on third. Now it's Hall. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And this is scooped up by the Lions. Inside the 10. And into the end zone. A scoop and score. was a close game. They needed a little breathing room where they got it right there on that return for a touchdown. Yeah, we would say that this could be huge. Forget it. It was huge. Gave them a comfortable lead. Badgley on for the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. from his end zone. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. And now out comes Minnesota. They are looking to make a bit of a 180. They are sputtering right now. And frankly, I think it's time to call your playmakers together and say, all right, guys, we're going to lean on you through this patch. We need you to get us back on track and get us going in the right direction. So you're calling plays geared to them. Not necessarily what you look at your plays, oh, this hurts the defense. I want the ball in the hands of X, Y, and Z and see if we can move forward. So don't get too cute. Go to the playmakers. 115 yards rushing for him now to this point. And while the guys with the ball are having a whole lot of fun keeping it on the ground, the guys on the opposite side, they are having zero fun. They've been getting pushed around the entire game and haven't found an answer yet to slow down the running game. Here's Hall. That is caught by Josh Oliver, the former San Jose State Spartan. First target, first catch, and a first down. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Here's Madison running on first down, and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Ball on the 39. Here's second down at seven. Throwing here is Hall. This one caught by Osborne, right side. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. There's the arm strength that we saw in college and during the scouting process. And really, it's not just the arm strength there, but the placement as well. To me, that was an excellent combination of arm talent and accuracy. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And this is not going to work as planned. He's going to be met and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11.
Well, here's a fake on the jet sweep, and they'll look to throw it off play action. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there's not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Ball to throw it. And this pass broken up. Well, the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. As soon as he leaked out and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. Here's Greg Joseph now to try the field goal. He made his first, this from 47 yards out. Joseph's got it. And then we'll get the disadvantage now back down to 11. So chalk that down as an eight-play drive capped with a field goal. Yeah, as a friend of mine used to say, they were moving and grooving for a while, but they couldn't keep the momentum going enough to get a touchdown out of it. Joseph now to kick this one away. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. And Detroit getting set to go now. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Montgomery on the counter. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game against them, but tally that one on the side of the defense. Do you think maybe, possibly, it could be a little bit of a changer for them? Maybe not a game changer, but a little bit of a momentum one that maybe they can string together some pretty good plays and slow them down. From the gun, here's Goff. Going underneath, Gibbs has it. Call it a gain of three on the play. And third and eight now. Well, offensively, that's a mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Throwing on third, Goff. This pass complete to Reynolds. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. A gain of 22. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. From the 50, it's gone. He'll leave it for Montgomery complete. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Now gone. That's into the hands of Reynolds. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. They'll run it. Here's Montgomery. What a nice 
burst there as he'll take this inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. It's a gain of 14 and a first down for Detroit. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. First down, they run again. Here's Montgomery. 64 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. So second and four from the 22. as shown by that last play. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Now Montgomery running right. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. If this defense wants to stay in this ball game, they've got to start ending some drives. That helps. And they have to look ahead at what they expect the offense to do. And right now with that lead, that's run the football. So you don't just stack the line of scrimmage. You have to get upfield and try and make some plays in their backfield. Now Goff. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. And here you're down in the red zone. You need to be smart, not force anything. So that's a wise decision to just get rid of the football. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and 10. A shotgun snap for Goff. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow them to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let them get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. Batchley able to punch this one through, and that will extend their lead even further. So a dozen plays on that drive, CD, but in the end, it yields just the three points. Well, they were able to keep the defense on the field for a long time, but let's be honest about it. That was about as unsatisfying a drive as you're going to get. 12 plays, and you only get three points out of it. Not quite the ending they were looking for. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Taken at the goal line. Escapes the defender. And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. This offense returns to the fold along with running back Alexander Madison. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back because that means everything's coming together for you. Big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. That's down the field for Jefferson. And the defense loses him. It's complete. Touchdown, Vikings. Justin Jefferson, 66 yards. And the Vikings are back within a score. Well, you know he can be explosive, and he's ultra-explosive there on the fly route. And you know how many times we've talked to coaches and we've had quoted back to us, well, you know something? When you execute really well, it doesn't matter if they know it's coming or not. Well, sometimes athleticism beats you as well. He just took off and went. And that's almost like one of your turkey bowl games, isn't it? <laughs> just go long, Backyard. man. I'll hit you. And it worked really well for them. Joseph connects on the extra point, and that'll cut the lead down to a touchdown.
Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Detroit's offense ready to take over. Still enjoying the lead here in the third quarter despite their defense giving up that last touchdown. Now they'll see if they can get the equalizer here on this drive. Goff in this Lions offense set for a first and 10 at their own 22. They'll start on the ground with Montgomery. And not much doing there, maybe a yard up to the 23. You know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stuffed the run. From the 23, here's the second down and nine. In motion, the tight end. Back to Montgomery on second down. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. 72 yards rushing for him now to this point. They need two. Here's third down. They'll keep pounding here with Montgomery. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. I bet they thought they had picked that one up because it was a third and two call, and they got awfully close. Now we're at fourth and inches. I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here <laughs> and maybe want to go pick it up. Here comes the Lions punter now as he's on to kick it away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. Yeah, call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And it will be Vikings ball, first and 10. There's a glimpse of Justin Jefferson, the wide receiver, as he and the Minnesota Vikings return back here on offense. Pretty good game for him so far. I guess he's still got time here to make this a great game, but so far, he's been solid. I like where you're going with that because it has been pretty good, but there's always that hint that things can really escalate for him. And right now, they, they feel like they're somewhat keeping him in check, but he has found the end zone once. But oh boy, he can explode at any moment. Man, when you hit that end zone once, you want to find it again, don't you? <laughs> yes, makes, you do. It makes you, get, you hungrier. You, you get greedy in a good way. That'll go for a gain of seven, and that's going to bring up second down. In motion right is Osborne. And they'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead, a handoff up the middle. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. They get 14 there. First down, Vikings. So both offenses come to life here in this third quarter as this is shaping up for a good finish. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Ford Field. It's the Vikings in possession of the football, but they need some points. They're trailing here to start the fourth. And the Lions pressure too strong. Down he goes. There's Charles Harris getting home for the sack. They were looking for a big play in this comeback situation, and they call a play action pass, and it backfires. If you're going to run that play this late in the game, you have to have a plan in mind to avoid the sack. Throw it away, scramble, do something, but don't go down in your own backfield. Here's Hall. He gets it to Addison. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to set up a tough third and nine. Go right for any passing play to work out. 
Quarterback has to understand the defense, deliver an accurate ball. Receiver has to concentrate and bring it in. Somewhere along the assembly line, something was off with that one. And here's Ryan right now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. The Lions offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Goff on first down. A little short pass here taken in by Laporta and able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. He's a rookie, and you don't want to get hung up on the word potential, but when you see him make catches like that, you keep thinking to yourself, he's good now. He's got a chance to be great with plenty of work. On second down, Montgomery. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. 11 yards there and a Lion first down. The running game continues to be a big part of their success here early in the fourth quarter. And with those types of runs, that tells you they feel very confident in their running game. They feel very strong at this stage of the contest. And they want to keep doing exactly what we saw there, running the ball down their throat. First down, here's the run to Montgomery. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Here's a second and eight. Now a give running right is Montgomery. And he'll get this up to about the 40. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. Surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. And here now the punter, Fox, as he sends this one away. It's a 42-yard punt. They keep him to just a yard on the return. And the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. The Vikings ready to go again on offense. They'll start this drive out on the ground. They had a very short pickup there across the 15 to the 16. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Going to run with Madison again. They'll get him to the ground at the 20 following a pickup of four. The Vikings on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. Here it's third and three. They'll try to get it on the ground with Madison. And it'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. Well, forget knowing where the first down line was. This defense created their own line of scrimmage. They won every battle up front. And a lot of times that is one-on-one. -on -one. If you win your one-on-ones enough times, 
your defense is going to be pretty good. They had more people to the football and snuffed out the play. And here's Ryan right now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Let's take it inside his own 40. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Lions offense set to take over. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. Goff in this Lions offense set for a first and 10 at their own 46. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. This one swung out to Montgomery. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. It'll be a gain of five, and that'll make it second down. Here's Gaw. Montgomery, another targeted catch. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets him a three and out. Two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together. Just what you described. Get them the ball, give them a little momentum, and they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. Up the middle, it's Montgomery. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. 11 yards there and a Lion first down. I know at times today's NFL sure feels like everything's about the guy throwing the football. But when you've got a guy who can run it and move it and gain this type of yardage, you'll take him each and every time. Again, they'll go ground with Montgomery. And he works his way free all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. That time, a little misdirection really seemed to fool the defense. And think of it this way. From the time you're in high school, you're taught to watch film and pick up tendencies. Sometimes they can use those against you, though, when they break their own tendencies and hit you back the opposite direction, huh? They'll try the middle with Montgomery, and he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. Second and nine. They'll try the air now with golf. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. One thing you hope to see out of a rookie tight end is a real concentration when the ball's in the air. And I'm not sure that he didn't. But he has to be prepared for people making a play on it when that ball's up for grabs. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. Now a give running left with Montgomery. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Partner, I know my grade school teachers never would believe this, but I can absorb a lesson. I think there's a lesson in this one. He's having a great day running the football, but occasionally... They're going to find a way to stop you, aren't they? Yeah, this time the defense stepped up and what's been so far a tough game for them. Badgley able to knock this one through and that will extend their lead even further. So that CD, an important one here in the fourth quarter. And that importance cannot be overstated. All eyes on both sidelines were staring that one down all the way. The significance is that they made it a two-score game. Still lots of time left to go, but likely that was their goal at the start of the drive. Get three points, make it a two-score game, and they were able to get it done. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Nuwangu now from his end zone. 
And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game, so they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. second sack of the afternoon tell you what he did not have much time there to skim the field before he was ducking and covering did it appear to you as it did to me that the defensive front won their play really quickly yeah. meaning the guys in front of them had almost no chance to block them they were on him in a hurry shows off the quick feet as he takes this one up to the 20 so eight yards on the completion there and that brings up third and a full 10 yards they're giving those short little routes, tackled them in bounds, too. They're just not wanting to get beat over the top. Yeah, and if you can't really get downfield, take the short routes. But now you've got to have guys who can actually break tackles and increase those gains. That is caught. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Hall. His throw incomplete. Try to find Jordan Addison that time. And now it's second down. Here's Hall. And his throw is incomplete. Jordan Addison, the intended receiver. And now it's third down. from the shotgun with Madison. And he'll be taken down well before the first at about the 36-yard line. Well, look at the clock. You're down two scores. Have to go for this, don't you? And they thought that as soon as they took over possession. It didn't matter where they were on the field. They were always going to be in four-down territory. Backed up in good situation. It didn't matter. So they've been preparing for that on their play sheet the entire time. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. The Vikings unable to convert here on fourth. And the Lions will get the football back in terrific field position. So now with a little over two minutes to play, the road back gets very difficult. Difficult, but still not impossible if they go ahead and play this thing out. Now the defense has to come up big. They've got to go for the strip of the football on each and every snap to try and give themselves a chance. They're coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. Going up the gut, Montgomery. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Lions in possession of the football as we welcome you back. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Third and 10, expect a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. A give to Montgomery, out of the gun. And he works his way free all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play.
Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Game in hand, the offense takes the knee. Moved back to the 10, they'll try on second and goal here. And off comes to Montgomery. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. It's a pickup of three, but still a little work to do on third and goal. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is yeah, it? Yeah, defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. Goff with a kneel down here, and that should put a conclusion to this one. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So this one's over. It's a win for the Detroit Lions. And we talked so much about the turnover battle determining who wins and who loses. This game, no exception. They didn't turn the ball over at all, and they go on to victory. They look like a smooth operation in this one, didn't they? Because you look at every facet of the game, they handled their business. Offense took care of the football, converted it into points. Defense took the ball away, gave it back to the offense. Special teams right there with them. That's the type of game a coach is going to really love and value. And when they show the film, they have to be careful not to give out too many kudos and kill their motivation going forward. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. It's a win for the Lions as we say so long from Ford Field.